<laughs> Hello again, my lovelies. Pirate Scum Gaming here. And I have been waiting a long time to bring you this video. Tonight I am going to be taking a look at my build on the T6X Sarcophagus Dreadnought Carrier. I've had this ship for some time. I've been wanting to do a carrier build on it for some time. I just didn't know how to build it. Thanks to a little bit of inspiration from Stu1701, I was finally able to lock down a very good, easy carrier build for this ship. This is a fun but lethal build. And buyer beware, this ship is extremely tanky to turn if you can get it to turn at all. It has a very, very slow turn rate, and without help, it, it turns like a block of ice in a molasses ocean in the middle of January, if that's any indication. But overall, I really enjoy this ship. It is a really cool ship, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. And no, your eyes do not deceive you. Yes, I did call it the IKS Nausicaan Hearse, because as you all know about the Sarcophagus Dreadnought Carrier from Star Trek Discovery, they use the coffins of the Fallen Warriors as added armor. So I felt the name was appropriate. This is a little bit different build than I'm used to. First off, I am running a can a cannon scatter volley build on this. The first cannon, of course, is the Terran Task Force Disruptor Dual Heavy Cannons. These are very, very powerful cannons because damage dealt increases as target hull decreases up to 200% damage at 25% hull or lower. That is what we call the Execute Cannons. These will be, always have a high, a very high place on your parse when you look at it. Next, I have a couple sp spiral wave disruptor dual heavy cannons. These are the most powerful disruptor weapons in the game at the moment. That is why we are using this. Because not only is, shit, is this ship big, it is powerful. So I felt again, I felt it was very appropriate to use these. Next is the dark matter quantum torpedo. Everyone knows why we use this. This is one, the best all-around torpedo in the game, no matter what you're doing with it. Be it torpedo boat, energy weapon, or science. Its dark matter dissolution dot is also very powerful, especially when paired with cumicite laced weaponry. It is also part of the Lorca's Ambition 2-piece, which I am using for this. More on that later. Space Core has not changed for an energy weapon build. I'm still using the Elite Fleet Intervention Protomatter Deflector from your colony holding. We are using this because of the added crit severity and crit chance. Next is the prevailing innervated impulse engine. This should be a no-brainer for this particular ship because of its turning issues. 350%, 300%, no, 350%, pardon, flight speed turn rate for 5 seconds, 15 defense rating, and 10% increased recharge speed on tactical bridge officer abilities. This is a tactical carrier and it is heavily and is tack heavy. So this does help a lot with that. Next is the Elite Fleet Plasma Integrated Warp Core. This is from your Spire holding. 66% power transfer rate and minus 10% weapon power cost. And last, Tilly's Review Pending Modified Shield from your Discovery Reputation. Your weapon attacks cause enemy shields to receive 11.5% increased damage for 10 seconds based on your shield power. And as you can see down there, my shield power is it's not set very high because shields don't mean very much in this game, unfortunately. Maybe that'll change in the future, but I wouldn't hold your breath. Otherwise, you'd turn a nice bully in blue or, and or Andorian blue. Aft weaponry, we have the heavy biomolecular disruptor turret. This comes from the 8472 reputation, also known as Counter Command. 
Uh, the reason you're using this is because this is a he rather heavy hitting turret. And it goes very well with the theme. Next is an Alachi Crescent turret. Uh, only reason I'm using this it is what I had on hand at the moment, but it is also quite powerful. Last but not least is the Spiral Wave Disruptor turret. Also, uh, these are, like I said earlier, these are the most powerful disruptor weapons in the game. Devices, a deuterium surplus, that's a no-brainer. I've talked about this before in the past. Uh, it's called Evasive in the Can, or I also, or as I like to call it, Go-Go Juice. Next is the energy, what, energy Amplifier from your Beam R&D. This unlocks at level 15. Kobayashi Root Transponder, this was an event reward from some time ago. It gives a chance of random buffs. And last but not least, Reactive Armor Catalyst. This is a great oh crap button. Also, this is good for cleansing board plasma fire from your hull as it gives you temporary hit points. Next is the Lorca's Custom Fire Control Console, also known as the Lorca's or the Lorcator. Some nice crit chance, weapon power setting, and the big one, 157.5 Starship Shield Pen. Because we all know, the faster you cut through shields, the faster you're hitting the hull, and the faster you're killing the enemy. And let's talk about that 2P. Okay, the two set. War discretion on crit, and you will be critting with this, mind you. Plus 1% crit severity buff for 20 seconds. Stacks up to 25 times, so that's 25% extra crit severity you're getting with this two-piece set. Now, the console layout's a lot different than what I'm, that I would normally run on a ener standard energy weapon DPS build. And mind you, I, don't, I didn't build this for DPS. I built this to have fun with. You know, do patrols, do missions, do story missions. I mean, yes, I did run an ISU earlier just so I could show off the potential of these pets and what they're capable of. But overall, I just enjoy doing patrols with this ship. It's fun. First up is the Universal Console Immolating Phaser Lance. This is a very, very powerful console. I've talked about this many times. It is just absolute brute force, and I love it. Next up, Domino. Uh, we're not using it for the phaser or accuracy. We're using it for the active. 25% firing cycle haste for energy weapons. 25% bonus all damage. 25% recharge speed for bridge officer abilities. And 100% recharge speed for torpedo weapons. Next is the bioneuron fusion circuits. You will find this on all of my builds. This is one of the oldest consoles in the lobby store. Gives some hull capacity, more on that later. Starship control expertise, because I am running a series of controls on this. As well as a nice chunk of crit severity. Next up is the Tachyon Net Drones. This comes from the Bozeman. This is also called the D20 of Doom. You're getting some crit chance, you're getting some crit severity, and, star and Starship perception as the passive. But it's the active what we're using it for. This launches out a small swarm of drones that forms a giant purple D20 of doom that knocks enemy shields offline, reduces damage resistance rating, and on crit hit applies 25, a little bit over 2,500 kinetic damage. Next, Swarmer Matrix. You can find this fine console on the exchange or in the infinity cross-faction uh, cross faction salvage box. 30% turn speed, flight speed, and damage for your hangar pets and targetable, targetable torpedoes. Not to mention 50 projectile weapon training. And since I'm running the Valkyries, which just spam out torpedoes left, right, and central, this is a very, very good console to use. It's a good console to use around any carrier build, no matter what pets you're running. Next is the Sensor Suspension Burst. This comes of the anniversary ship, the Jurok Carrier. 
you're getting some crit chance, some auxiliary power setting, but it's the active one we're using it for, the sensor suspension burst. To yourself and allied players within 20 kilometers, 20% crit hit chance for 5 seconds, resets hangar bay recharge time, that's important, to player hangar pets and summons within kilometers. Now I think this also buffs the uh, call emergency artillery. I would have to dig deeper into the parse to see if that is true or not. It'd be nice if it did. 30% crit hit chance for 20 seconds. And placate foes within 10 kilometers for 20 seconds. Next, computer assisted flight algorithms. You can also find this on the Exchange or in the Infinity Cross Faction Salvage Pack. 10% flaking damage versus enemy's rear arc. 10% flight speed. 30% flight turn rate. Active. For 30 seconds, non flanking weapon attacks against the primary target grant. Plus 20 damage resistance. Plus 40 speed and 100% flight turn rate for 10 seconds. For 30 seconds, flanking weapon attacks against the primary target deals plus 30% damage and reduces the ability's cooldown and reduces the ability's cooldown by half a second. That's nice. And for such a big ship as this, this is almost you almost need to have this on here. Because like I said, this ship does not turn well at all. Trust me on that. I have, I worked hard and I did a lot of research and some help from friends. Thank you, Talon for introducing me to a few things that help get this beast turning the way you will see it turn in the IC coming up. Tactical consoles, same as always. Lord, the vulnerability locators from your fleet spire. Now for the hangar pets. These ridiculous things. The Elite Alliance Fighter Squadrons. This came off the Jurok Carrier. These were free. These are insanely good. They have micro anti proton beam arrays, micro anti my, my tongue stops working, micro anti proton pulse cannon, and fighter squadron abilities focused assault 3. Yeah, these things are just disgustingly good. And other hangar? Another hangar pet that's disgustingly good. The elite Valkyrie fighter from the Norway. These things are evil. The spam of torpedoes these things put out has to be seen to be believed. They just absolutely tear enemies apart. And I absolutely love these pets. These are some of the best pets they've put out in a very long while next to the Elite Alliance Fighter Squadrons. Now I have another hangar of these, but I haven't had a chance to test what two hangers of those to do, and I'm quite frankly, I'm kind of afraid to. To see just how good it's going to be. So uh, stay tuned for that. I'm going to be doing a test on it soon, uh, soonish, and I will put up a community post let you know just how it performs. So, all right, let's go ahead and look at skills. Same skill tree I've been running for some time now, thanks to Augie. If you guys need to copy this, now is a good time to pause the video and take a screenshot. So we can move on. Specializations have not changed. Still using Intel primary and temporal secondary. Okay, traits have changed substantially for this. First up, I have feel the weight of our presence. This is from the exchange. Applies feel the weight of our presence, affects foe, 25 max, within 12 kilometers sphere, minus 0.5 all damage resistance rating for 10 seconds. And it's that this does act up and this does do for quite well for itself. Next, superior beam drive, that should be cannon training. Ah, I love, you gotta love it when uh, uh, the loadouts work, right guys? Silly loadout. Anyway, superior cannon training. 
7.5% bonus cannon weapon damage. Next, Independent Wingmate. The first hangar pit launch permanently gains 200% bonus damage and 200 damage resistance rating. There is a reason on my spam bar here. Right here is my hangar bay spam bar. It is the last two to be fired, but when I go into combat, I click on the Valkyries first so they gain this that particular traits buff. I want them to have that particular traits buff because these are just, like I said, they're ridiculous. They're, they're just positively ridiculous. Next, Steph Cannoneer. Inertia because this thing does have a bit of a sliding problem. This helps counter that. Unconventional systems, also known as free DPS, using a control bridge officer ability gives minus 7% recharge on universal consoles. That's kind of important. I do have several universal consoles I am wanting to use all the time. Next, Terran targeting systems, plus 15% crit severity, not much to talk about there. Operative, crit chance, crit severity. Intelligence, agent, attache. On weapon crit strike, restore 2% of captain ability recharge. Fleet coordinator, uh, not much to talk about with this one. 2% bonus all damage per teammate. On a team of 5, you're getting 10%. And last but not least, we have Boimler. This is our primary means of cooldown. Now, I do have duty officers I'm using that keep Boimler in line in case he decides to go on coffee break or daydream. They stand behind him and slap him side the back of the head, tell him to pay attention. Okay, for starship traits, we are using, we are using Withering Barrage. This was given away 10 times over already. Everyone should have a copy of this. This is your extension trait for Cannon Scatter Volley. Next, Emergency Weapon Cycle. Now we all know why we use this. This is from the Morgu, the Arbiter, and the Karak. This is a new one that I have. Active Temporal Surge. This comes from the Bozeman. You can see it right here. Phase out and become untargetable for 10 seconds, plus 100% crit chance for 10 seconds, plus 651% turn rate strength for 10 seconds, plus 813 flight speed strength for 10 seconds. Thank you for telling me about this, Talon. This makes this ship do donuts. I'm not kidding. This is a huge boon for this ship. Next, Universal Designs from the Refit Crossfield. On activating a Universal Console, you get plus 2% crit chance and 10% crit severity. It stacks up to 5 times. Pretty much this stays up the entire run since I have Immolating Phaser Lance equipped. So that's... Those two play off each other quite nice. Superior Area Denial. This comes from the Mirror Angle. When activating Fire Out Will or Scatter Volley. Grants Fire Out Will 1 and Scatter Volley 1 to your Hangar Pets. Upgrade your energy weapons for 20 seconds. Two targets hit, minus 30 all damage resistance rating. This is incredibly important for a carrier. I highly, highly, highly recommend you get this trait. And last but not least, we have Supplementary Coordination Network. This comes off the Seneca. When you launch Hangar Pets, 5% recharge reduction for Captain Abilities and Command Specialist Bridge Officer Abilities. This is a command, this does have a command seat, so this does work out quite nicely. Space Reputation, we have Tyler's Duality. Crit Chance based on Hull Capacity. I'm getting 6.1% Crit Chance based on my current Hull Capacity. That comes from the Discovery Reputation, by the way. From the Dyson Rep, Advanced Targeting Systems, Crit Severity. From the new Romulus Reputation, Precision, it's just Crit Hit Chance, 
from the Delta reputation. That should not be there. Again, loadouts are malfunctioning. Imagine that. It should be advanced engines, also from the Delta rep. Plus 31.3% flight speed, plus 31.3% flight turn rate. Again, this helps to get this ship moving. At last, magnified firepower, plus 6.3% bonus energy weapon damages from, from your gamma reputation. All right, let's take a look at some bridge officer station. Okay, first up. In the Lieutenant Commander Universal Command Seat, I'm using this as a science officer. I have Tractor Beam 1. This is an Uncon proc. I'm using Very Cold in Space. This is a debuff. Creates a level 66 cryonic turbulence for 15 seconds at foe's current location. To all foes within clear kilometers, Minus 24.8 flight speed, minus 50% flight friction, and a considerable amount of cold damage. Now you put this on like a group of spheres, it slows them down and allows your hangar pets to just absolutely annihilate them. Next is call emergency artillery. This calls in three friendly ships that deliver massive kinetic damage. Next, in the Ensign Universal Miracle Worker Station, I am using Narrow Sensor Bands. In the Commander Tactical Seat, I have Chemosite Lace Weaponry because it plays very, very well with my Dark Matter Quantum Torpedo. Attack Pattern uh, Beta 1 for the debuff. Torpedo Spread 3 to buff my torpedoes, and Scatter Volley 3 in the main event to buff those cannons. Make them go boom, 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 burt, burt, burt. Next, in the Lieutenant Commander Engineering Seat, I have Emergency Power 2 Weapons to proc Emergency Weapon Cycle, Emit Unstable Warp Bubble, this is an Uncon proc, and Emergency Power to Engines 3 to help get this beast turning. And last but not least, in the Lieutenant Science Seat, I have Jam Targeting System, Jam Targeting Sensors 1, which is an Uncon proc, as well as Scramble Sensors 1, which is an Uncon proc. So that gives me one, two, three, four Uncon procs for this. It's not good, not great, but it works. So let's go ahead and take a look at Duty Officers. Alright, we have my projectile weapon officer, Zet. Good old Zet. Chance for stacking crit severity buff on firing projectiles. You have 24 or 47. Uh, this is duty officer on use of tactical abilities. 15% chance for power levels maximum for 5 seconds. On use of Miracle Worker, 30% chance to improve crit chance by 2.5%. And I do, and I am using a Miracle Worker ability. Next is the Emergency Con Hologram. This recharges evasive maneuvers when uh, when using emergency powered engines. That helps keep both of those up all the time. And believe me, this ship needs it. The Tin Tan, my Feroz and Flight Deck Officer. Reduce the time to recharge hangar bays and boarding party. And Perlap, another flight deck officer. Chance to reduce the time to recharge call emergency artillery. So my emergency artillery is up pretty much all the time during the run. And last but not least, we have 38 of 47. Now this guy is standing behind Boimler, keeping him in line in case he decides to slack off. On use of tactical bridge officer abilities, 15% chance to reduce command, 
and vice versa for a command. Okay, let's do a quick visual tour of this beauty. The only regret I have about this ship, it, does, it doesn't have the sarcophagus bridge from Discovery. I'm a little bit bummed out about that. Now, I'm sure the powers that be had their uh, decision, their reasons for it, but it would nice have been, if that, if my tongue stops working again, it would have been nice if they would have added it. I, the, the ship is just, it's beautifully designed. But like I said earlier, unfortunately, it does have its turning issues, but I do know how to counter them. So with all that being said, Let's go ahead and take a look at that ISC I ran earlier to see these pets in action and to see the ship in action. Afterwards, we'll talk about the parse and we'll give our uh, final uh, discussion on the ship. So, I will catch you on the flip side. Welcome back, my lovelies. That was a fun little ISC demonstration, if I do say so myself. I am floored by how well I performed in that. I, I am, of course, at James Bryce, and I did almost 600K in the sarcophagus. 
That's outstanding. I didn't. I had no intention of doing that good. Those like I said, those pets are ridiculous. Also along with me is my good friend at Input End. Both three about three twenty four. Well done. At Lord Ice, my tanking student, two sixty one point seven four. Well done. At Mikey213, also known as Mad Dog Mikey. Go check him out on YouTube and Twitch. Mad Dog Mikey. And when you're there, drop him a sub on Twitch. Smash that subscribe button on YouTube like it owes you money. And ring that bell with a big ol' hammer. That way you guys know when Mikey drops more of his awesome content or when he goes live. And last but not least, the indomitable Talon pulling in just on just over 116k. Well done, Talon. I couldn't do this without these guys' help. These guys are uh, just amazing. The, I would run an ISC with this team over and over again and not get tired of it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the combat analysis. All righty. As you can see, my pets did 167k DPS. That's insane. Coming out on top, which surprises me in this instance, is my dual heavy spiral wave disruptor cannon. They actually came, they actually beat out the Terran Task Force ones for a change. That's surprising. Dark matter, late dark matter, lace quantum torpedo spread did very well. My turrets even performed well, which is surprising. Keep us light laced weaponry to 55k, that's nuts. Emulating phaser lance, 17k, not bad. Uh, dark, look, look, here is one of the concentrated firepower charges that I stole instead of my pet stealing. Tropic Rider performed well. Everything performed well and above my expectations. On top, Valkyrie Fighters. Look at this. 21k, 15k, 10k, 10k, 8k. These things are ridiculously good. Like I said, the Alliance, they even beat out the Alliance Fighters. Usually my Alliance Fighters do better, but in this case, the Valkyries win. They are they are ridiculous. They are awesome. If you, guys, if you don't have them ready, go get the Norway and get these fine fighter pets. They are they're awesome. If you don't want to get the Sea Star version, you can get these unlocked with the fleet version available at the ship vendor. So overall, I love these pets. This this build is ridiculous. It worked far and above my expectation. I didn't anticipate doing this well. You know, with it doing these kind of numbers, this can easily crush advanced content, patrols, ARTFOs, missions. Go! Use this ship. Have fun. That, because at, at the end of the day, that's the name of the game. Having fun. And that's what I do with this. I had a hell of a lot of fun. Whether it be doing the, using the ship and patrols, you know, ISC. I, I have fun doing ISC. I have fun doing anything. And that's, that's the important part. Because you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. So that being said, I highly recommend this ship if you're looking for a very, very solid carrier. It's a, it yes, it has its disadvantages with its turn problems, but as I as I showed you, it is easily overcome. So that being said, as always, don't go by the book. Think like a pirate. And I will catch you next time. Bye bye. Human. Play, damn jet, human!